This is Twit. Uh, tell us about your story of the week. Yeah. Um, so I, like everyone else, eagerly um, awaited, not tuned in because press releases, um, <laughs> Apple's <laughs> announcements this week. And, and uh, you know, there was some hope that we may see a new Apple TV, maybe HomePod Mini 2. Didn't get any of that. But for any smart home enthusiast, there was a glimmer of hope. Very bit, very hidden. But I wrote a piece about it this week. The new iPad, so the iPad Pro M5, is the first iPad to officially support Thread. Now, Thread is the smart home protocol that uh, Matter runs over. It's uh, the, a protocol that Apple has used for a while, um, starting with the HomePod Mini back in 2022 when that launched. Wow. Um, so I think that was the date I, my head is... Too many numbers in my head right now. <laughs> um, but when it when the HomePod Mini launched, that's when Apple first used Thread in its smart home. And now what's so interesting about this is that the new iPad Pro has Apple's new N1 wireless networking chip. And that, if in case you missed it, which you probably did because it wasn't widely covered, when the iPhone 17 launched in September, that was launched along with this new wireless networking chip. And this is Apple Design's chip, and it has Wi-Fi 7, Bluetooth 6, and Thread, all combined on one chip. And this is what I would call a smart home powerhouse chip. <laughs> it has everything you need for a matter, smart home, connectivity, really is like, okay, this chip will make a perfect smart home hub. <laughs> and everyone's like, well, the iPad is not a smart home hub. It is not. So there are two things I wrote about in this article. One is that the new iPad Pro with the N1 wireless chip is kind of could potentially sort of for, foreshadow what we're going to see in the new Apple TV and the new HomePod Mini 2, which may launch sometime this year. Um, although the sort of Prevailing theory is that they may be waiting on the Mini for the new Siri. So m next spring is more likely. Um, but we may well see an Apple TV sooner than that, especially as they just rebranded Apple TV Plus <laughs> to Apple TV. <laughs> um, ooh, big change. But that now we've got two products called Apple TV. Well, actually three, because that's <laughs> there's also the app and then the service, and then the device. So to me, I'm like, just call the Apple TV an Apple Home Hub. That would make so much sense. Uh, so I was kind of thinking, oh, maybe we're going to get that. So who knows? This is just all my speculation. But when we do get a new Apple TV, I would be very surprised if it didn't have this new wireless networking chip. And this chip is, is kind of exciting because, um, like I said, it sort of has everything you need for a smart home uh, hub and Apple Home has right now HomePods, HomePod Minis, and some Apple TVs are Home Hubs, and this means you can run your smart home automations, control it away from home using the Apple Home app. Without a Home Hub, you can still use Apple Home, but you have more limited control when you're you can't control it when you're away from home. Automations won't run if you're not at home, so you need one of these um, in your home. And the iPad used to be a home hub until Apple switched over to a new HomeKit architecture a couple of years ago, and then it deprecated the iPad as a home hub. This could indicate that they might bring back that capability, which I know a lot of people missed because not everyone wants to have a HomePod Mini or an Apple TV, but they still might want to run Apple Home Automation. So having an iPad in your home that can do that for you um, would be a, a nice thing. So potentially having the N1 chip in here could mean Apple is going to bring back that functionality. Has not been confirmed. I did reach out to Apple, have not heard back. but. The fact that Thread is in there means it would be an easy lift. One of the reasons it hasn't been a home hub in the past, or, or why they deprecated, I think, is because iPads don't always stay in the home. Right. So when you take your home hub away from your home, <laughs> things can go wrong. So, you know, it, it, it's a sort of toss up there. But um, it's interesting, I think, that they're bringing Thread to it. We do know that, and based on reporting that I, I did it last year, that there are thread rodeos in all, nearly all the other iPads and all the Macs, but none of them have actually been activated. They, Apple's never publicly acknowledged that they're there. We just found 
evidence of it in FCC filings. So this is the first iPad that publicly lists support for Thread. So I'm excited to see what Apple's going to do with this. Um, one of the so Apple does have Thread in iPad in iPhones. All the iPhones, all the iPhone 17, most of the 16, and then the Pro lines of the 15s all have Thread radios. And just to sort of the main, I've gone off on why I'm excited <laughs> about this chip, but actually what it can do, most likely, um, and this is what the iPhone can do with Thread Radio, is it can control Thread devices locally. So when you go buy a new Thread smart lock, you will be able to set it up using your iPad and not have to have a Thread border router. And this has been a real kind of pain point as people have been adopting the smart home and new matter. Uh, the new matter smart home standard and thread devices is like, what's a thread border router? Why, why do I have to have one? What if I don't have one? Now, if you have an iPad Pro with the newest one, um, you wouldn't need a th necessarily need a thread border router to set up your smart home device. So that's, that's kind of overall what I got excited about from the announcement. I know most people are probably more excited about the new, new MacBook, but I was like, yay, thread. <laughs> Yeah, so that's this is something that I actually I was asked about um, when the new phones came out and I was doing my review uh, was kind of why is this chip in there and what does it you know what does it provide for someone who is thinking about getting into um, or, or adding thread devices and that was the main yeah. thing which you just talked about there which is. There's, can you talk about the difference between a thread device that is a child device uh, versus <laughs> a thread border router? Yeah. Uh, it, the, the iPhone, it's my understanding, is the full experience, right, as a, a HomePod mini or a, a, another device would be. A, yeah. Whereas something like this little friend I have here, which is a little Eve sensor, mm -hmm. uh, it does not have the capability to kind of be a node, right, in the in the thread, uh, right. thread network. And then maybe could you also tell the listeners a little bit about the difference in thread versus what we're used to with wireless networking, where the more you have in Thread's case, the stronger and more robust versus the other yeah. where that interference is an issue. Yeah. So, um, so to your first question, like, as I mentioned, one of the core issues, use cases here of having Thread in a mobile device, like an iPad or a phone, is that you can use it to set up a device, um, you know, so that you take away that friction of like, I just bought this new lock and I can't use it because <laughs> that's not a great experience. Um, but what it can also do, and this is something that want, that I had an Apple executive talk to me about who's the head of the thread group. And he, so I know this one for a fact <laughs> um, because, you know, Apple is very wishy-washy about answering right. questions, um, is that because it is battery powered and because many devices on Thread are battery powered. This is one of the benefits of Thread. It's, it's a low power smart home protocol, so it doesn't drain power from a device like, say, Wi-Fi will. If you've ever had a Wi-Fi smart lock, you'll know you've been changing the batteries every three months. If you have a Thread smart lock, it will last up to about a year. We're still testing to see exactly how long I've been getting on these new Thread locks, but that's one of the benefits. If your internet goes down and your power is out, you have a thread radio in your iPhone or your iPad, you can still control battery powered devices because it can establish a direct connection over thread. A lot like Bluetooth. It's actually, it does, it shares a lot with Bluetooth in terms of um, connectivity, um, connectivity features. Are they features. cousins or are they sisters? <laughs> so, well, so, the, uh -oh. the key difference. I've opened up a can of worms. <laughs> <laughs> and the key difference, and this goes to your other question, why uh -huh. Thread in the smart home, is um, that Thread is a self-healing mesh network. Now, Bluetooth, there, you can see Bluetooth mesh networking. It's not that common. Most Bluetooth devices are point to point, you know, like earbuds or a keyboard or, you know, they're even, you know, some, some smart lights run on Bluetooth mesh, but in general, it's more point to point. Thread is a self-healing mesh network. And to your question about why it's 
So it's, this is what makes it so good for the smart home is the more devices you have, the stronger that mesh network is. Mm -hmm. So they, they, the signal can hop like Zigbee or a Z-Wave mesh network can hop from device to device. And your little Eve, uh, um, that's an Eve Room, outdoor I sensor, think, or, right? Or yeah, indoor but sensor, it's for, it's air for quality. Outdoors, yeah. yeah, there's the outdoor one and the indoor one. Um, that is an end device. So it's not powered, not plugged in permanently powered. It's battery powered. So it can receive signals, but it can't pass on signals. But any thread node that is powered, so like a light bulb or a smart plug, um, can pass on the signal um, so that the more devices you have, the stronger your network. Um, a thread border router is a is a always plugged in device. So it's gonna be something like a HomePod mini or a Apple TV. And it takes the signal from devices and translates it to other networks. So it helps Thread connect to the internet because Thread is an entirely local mesh network, just like Bluetooth is entirely local. It doesn't have an in integral connection to the internet. It needs a Thread border router to send that signal. And that's why we have, that's why Apple introduced the HomePod Mini to be a Thread border router in order to connect Thread smart home devices to the internet so you can control them away from home. But you can use Thread entirely locally in your, in your home and not have any internet connection and just control it directly from your phone or now your iPad. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, there's a lot to, to Sorry. Kind of, no, no, and that's okay because that, that, that's so how complicated. complicated it is. Absolutely. <laughs> um, but the good news is when it comes to this kind of a thing, it's been my experience that on my end, the stuff really is just working. There was a period of time where things were a little bit confusing um, for the devices on my network because uh, I had Eero running its own thread network. <laughs> and that, you, you know, <laughs> it was not trying to play ball with the stuff that was sort of doing thread over home kits. And it, it got a little messy, but then I was able to kind of say, you know what, I'm just starting fresh. We're just going to do this from the, from the top. And then everything's uh, from there seems to have kind of locked in and yeah, it's been yeah. a, a pretty great experience. So that has I'm been one of the that. big problems with thread is that um, border router issue. And actually with iOS 26, Apple introduced the um, thread 1.4, which allows border routers from different manufacturers to merge. So you can actually have an Apple home thread network in your home with a HomePod mini, a Google Nest hub, and a now, because SmartThings just added support for this as well, a SmartThings AOTech smart home hub all working together in harmony <laughs> to keep mm -hmm. your smart home strong. <laughs> Yay. Um, we're still waiting on Amazon, which is the Eero and the Echo devices um, that, that they do not support this merging of, of thread networks yet, but that's coming. So yeah, it's exciting. Um, it's all coming together. <laughs> finally, finally. <Yes. laughs> you enjoying this tiny taste of Tech News Weekly? I'm happy to hear it. You can check out the full show on our website, twit.tv slash TNW, or you can watch it right here on YouTube. Just click the link below.